Design can communicate a lot about your character without a single line of dialogue. Details can help, but they can also really destroy the entire design if you're not careful. Details also take a whole lot of time, and there's nothing more frustrating than to notice that a lot of work I put in actually makes the whole design look worse than better. You've probably seen plenty of great beautiful drawings where characters look cool and they're floating in blank environments, but it's impossible to tell anything about them based on the way they look. For some it's enough that the characters just look cool and that's fine, but for me the real goal with each design is that I get a feel for what that character is like and maybe even tell if I would get along with that personality type if I saw them in real life. Okay, maybe that last bit is a bit weird given how many of my characters aren't even human beings these days. I'm sorry humans, I'm kinda over you right now, it's nothing personal. Since I don't do enemy designs at this moment, even though this is technically a monster design, a big thing for me in all character designs is that feeling that you get when you meet someone that is super interesting and you secretly think to yourself, I really wish that we could be friends. Now, of course, because I'm Finnish, I never say this out loud to other people, even though I might feel it, but that's the general vibe that I want to get to with my designs. Once I started identifying that goal in my designs, it was easier to dig deeper into what that actually means. Interested people are interesting, and more specifically, anyone who's truly passionate about something is immediately more magnetic to me than anyone who's just drifting through life. This is my cornerstone for characters, and the same is true for this one. After blocking in the main shapes of this little monster, I had identified that he has a really thick tail, and a shape that looks like a tree on his head. So this is the point where my intuition brought me, but that's not really a story yet. I have two wildly different concepts, but I'm missing the story that brings these elements together. To me, this is a good starting point for a design, because I already know what questions I need to answer, and now I just need to find the clues that will get me there, and I will walk you through this process in this design. The tail seems like an easier place to look for those clues, because the way I have defined it already gives this whole character like an otter-like look. Based on that alone, now I know that this character spends a lot of time near water. However, these small limbs that I gave him, they don't look like he'd be very fast in water, because he doesn't have flippers of any kind. This is something that I can enhance by giving his tail these feathers that grow on it horizontally instead of vertically, making that tail a balancing tool for walking on land instead of a main tool for swimming. Now that I know that the legs are kind of short, I have a better understanding of the surroundings. This is a shallow pool of water, surrounded by tall vertical mountains, since it doesn't look like there's much wind in this area, just based on the way the foliage is hanging on his head. At this point I can look around and see that this is a clear open space with just water surrounding it, so why would anyone be here in the middle of nowhere? Well, fishing of course. I started by painting this dead fish that I honestly just enjoyed way too much, especially because of this really stupid way that I drew the fish eye here. And there's always this push and pull with my creativity, what level of crazy I can get away with. My creativity is definitely a chaotic neutral type, and sometimes it's peeking over my shoulder and whispering things like, doodle it like a child would do and just leave it that way and see if you can get away with it. I don't know why, but I really do enjoy going along with these nonsense ideas. This is like a really long pseudo apologetic way of telling you that I love this fish and I'm definitely not going to fix it <laughs> if somebody wants me to do it. I hope that you understand that it's the creativity that is the brave one here. I'm just basically following orders and doing what it wants me to do. So what's next on our character design agenda? Naming, of course. Names are super important, not just for characters, but for every illustration in general. When I'm painting, I'm constantly thinking about what the name of the piece is. Through that process, I decided to call this character Kingfisher. He's obviously very dedicated to fishing. I mean, did you notice how cute this apron is? I'm obsessed with aprons for some weird reason because clearly a mark of a true professional is a fancy looking specific apron to that skill. And here it's a fishing apron. Super fancy. Also, I thought that this hat is so extra that it must be a sign of true royalty. 
and that's how I ended up with the name Kingfisher. When you see this character and you know his name, I think it just gives a different kind of a vibe than if it was just a picture without any description on it. This hat is not just a fashion statement, it serves a functional purpose too. Because it's sparkling with this dazzling golden foliage, it attracts a lot of fish to come closer. These leaves can also be used with the variety of fishing lures that are hanging from the brim of the hat. Now I have bridged that story gap between my design shapes with a story that explains the connection between the two. Technical information sidebar. I know that someone wants to know about the tools I'm using, so for this painting I'm using my cork brush. During the last month I've been focusing on these live lessons for my channel members, but once the next download package for the mob comes, I'll include this brush again in the package, because I really like it. It has a little bit of high contrast texture, but at the same time it's really easy to control and blend colors with. As usual, this painting has been done with only one brush. So cork is the only thing that I needed for this, and I used the same for eraser. I know YouTube process videos can be deceiving, because we YouTubers had to edit really long process down to just a handful of clips. But I wanted to highlight that finding these answers to those design problems took hours. It seems clear and linear now when I'm describing it, but with each step I pretty much have just one clue to go on that informs me what the next detail will be. This way of approaching design makes the process way more fun for me, because I get to experience and discover the story as it's happening. I can't just make stuff up and wing it, because from my own experience, I know that it's a pretty easy way for me to paint myself into a corner. Telling a story with a character design is a pretty much like composition, that all the elements that you put in, they need to give clues to the viewers to read that story through your design decisions. So if you give them wrong clues, then the focus will be drifting to other places, and then it's harder for your audience to access that story and be on the same page with what you are telling them. Deciding on a name and figuring out what the environment looks like, those both can be really handy tools to bring out more of that information. One extra trick on top of this that I have noticed in bigger projects is to define the main characters through supporting cast. A supporting character can have wants or needs that either align or contrast with the main character. And to find my supporting characters for this, all I really needed to do is to look around and see what else is in the environment. So if this is a shallow body of water, of course in those sort of areas there are plenty of birds looking for food. That gave me an idea that few of the birds aren't part of this group that is just wandering around the plains, but they are just sitting inside the hat so these are two very opportunistic lazy seagulls, because my main character is a very hardworking, dedicated one. Also I thought that this hat is just a really cozy place for these two birds to just sit around in and wait for easy snacks. They are also the perfect companions for Kingfisher on his long trips, because it's looking pretty lonely in this scenery. This area looks quite deserted. I'm sure that these two leeches are better company than none at all. Extra lessons that I learned during this process. You only really need one clue to keep developing a character design. Not a Pinterest board, not a bullet point list with tons of information, just one clue is enough to keep going. You can create the impression of almost all hues with just one color, and it's worth doing so when you're already dealing with tons of other composition tools in your painting, to make the illustration easier for your viewers to read. Most importantly of all, aprons are amazing. I didn't know anything about Kingfisher when I started, but now when I'm at this point, I really wish that we could be friends. To see how you can use this method to create a story in an environment, check out this video and also learn more about isometric art in the process. I'm Mikko and I'll see you in the next one.